ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय 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 यसरे वे had the program titled the journey of self discovery and we invited participants to attend a forthcoming seminar on bhagavad gita which is beginning today so you may wonder what all this singing and dancing and jumping up and down and banging on instruments has got to do with self discovery or bhagavad gita we don't find in mahabharat a description of krishna and arjuna on the chariot pulling out mridanga and kartals and having a kirtan rather krishna was telling arjuna pull out your bows and arrows and shoot the opposite party what's this got to do with self discovery self discovery we think of some meditation some higher cosmic consciousness the answer to this will be given in detail in the seminar which will as i said that will be given from tomorrow in a systematic manner today we'll speak in a general way but as i was saying that uh, in the international society for krishna consciousness as it is everything begins with this kirtan krishna kirtan chanting the names of krishna and we have various lectures and different programs and we the whole purpose is to encourage people to chant hare krishna so sometimes people find it difficult to understand what's this chanting hare krishna got to do with bhagavad gita because generally people think that bhagavad gita and <coughs> vedanta philosophy it means very deep philosophizing and uh, like this introspective intellectual it is it's true bhagavad gita is very deep philosophy it's said to be the beginning of spiritual uh, of or of vaishnava philosophy is found in bhagavad gita but actually it's it is vedanta bhagavad gita is vedanta in as much as in vedanta what does vedanta mean vedanta actually means the upanishads we find in the vedic literature most of it is concerned with karma kanda in bhagavad gita lord krishna says trigunya vishaya veda nistrigunyo bhava arjuna that mostly the vedas deal with topics within the three modes of material nature and he advises arjuna to be to go beyond these three modes of nature sattva rajas tamas the most we find in the vedas directions on how one can execute pious activities punya karma and be free from the results of papa and as a result one can apparently enjoy life in this material world the vedic path is described by lord krishna in bhagavad gita where he says that tetam bhuktva swarga lokam vishalam kshine punye marja lokam vishanti evam trai dharmam anuprapana gatagatam kama kama labhante he speaks about trai dharma trai dharma means that religious activities which are executed within the three modes of material nature and particularly those which are meant for going to swarga loka where one can enjoy material happiness much more than on this planet it is uh, sim- so much facility for sense enjoyment that is called uh, vishala sukha very great material happiness compared to that which is on this planet but lord krishna describes that when one's 
punya, the result of his punya karma fall becomes diminished. Kshine punya means kshina means diminished. Then one has to come back again to the earth plane. In other words, it's like earning some points. You do some punya karma, then you enjoy in the heavenly planets, but then your your punya karma fall is going down and down and down and down. And there comes a point where your your bank balance is run out. Just like you may amass some money and then you just go on, you go on a spending spree with your credit card and after some point they say, sorry, we're not going to give you credit on this card. It's overdrawn. <laughs> Time to go back to work. Earn some money. You can't use this card anymore. So like this, one has to come back to this uh, earthly planet and then again one may follow the prescriptions for karma kanda, go to the heavenly planets and enjoy life there. If in either in the earthly planet or in the heavenly planets, if one makes some mistake and due to some change of consciousness or even by some actual mistake, he makes some sinful activity, then he may have to fall. Even Nahush was described in Mahabharata and Ramayana. He was the king of heaven, but he made some mistake. He became proud and he he uh, mocked the rishis in the heavenly planets and he had to fall down like a, as a snake. Right from the king of heaven to the position, immediately to a snake position. So, uh, this is the path of enjoyment described in the Vedas. But actually, as Lord Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, there's no real enjoyment in this material world. He says, Dukhali Amashashvata. This material world is actually it's miserable and everything here is temporary. Even if you get some so-called material happiness in the heavenly planets, it's actually not real happiness. It's not Atmasuk. It's only Dehasuk, happiness of the body. And it's temporary. Everything here is temporary. So this is the subject matter of the Upanishads. The Upanishads, that is the Vedanta. When we went through all the Vedas, the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, then Atato Brahma Jignasa, Vedanta Sutra, which is parallel to Bhagavad Gita, that uh, describes that now we've been through all this nonsense of... Uh, this materialistic enjoyment through the Vedic path. Purva monks. Now we should come to Uttara monks. The, the consideration of actual actual spiritual knowledge. Atma Gyan. So Vedanta means Upanishads, which is it's generally expected that after going through the Karmakanda section. Or we'll come to the Jnana in which one analytically he analyzes. That's mimanks means to analyze and come to a conclusion, to bring out a conclusion. So the, uh, <coughs> of course, there are the uh, materialistic mimanksikas also, but the the uh, that's purvi mimanks, so uttara mimanks, or the Jnana section of the Vedas. That is meant for understanding that we are not the body. The body is temporary. We are soul. We are not meant for suffering in this material world. We are meant to be liberated from this world of suffering from repeated birth and death. So this is the subject of Bhagavad Gita. We'll find in Bhagavad Gita, it's actually a, a summary of all the knowledge in the Upanishads. But it brings the knowledge of the Upanishads to its conclusion in statements such as Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Vedaishya Sarva Raham Eva Vedyo, Vedanta Krit Veda Vedeva Chaham. Lord Krishna states that in all the Vedas, what is the subject matter? Veda means that which is to be known. That which is to be known means Vidya. So what is the Object, what is the point? What is the actual subject of knowledge? That Krishna says, I am. All the Vedas, 
they're ultimately meant, the Vedic knowledge is meant for understanding Krishna. And Krishna himself is Vedanta bit. He himself understands, he understands what is Vedanta, what is the Upanishads, what is Vedanta Sutra, Brahma Sutra. Because he is uh, Vedanta, he is Vedanta Krit, so he makes the, he, he is the, as Vyasadeva, he is the compiler of the Vedanta, and certainly he is Veda bit. He knows what is the message of the Vedas. So, according to Bhagavad Gita, as it is, not according to the many misinterpretations of Bhagavad Gita, the subject matter of all the Vedas is Krishna. This also Vyasadeva at the end of Mahabharata has made a similar statement. Ramaya, Vede Ramaya Nechaiva, Purane Bharate Tata. Adav ante cha madhye cha hari sarvatra giyate. That in all the Vedas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Puranas, all the different branches of Vedic knowledge, in the beginning, middle and end, the only subject matter is glorification of Hari. There is another name for Krishna. Krishna, Hari, these are the two principal names of the Supreme Personality of original form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is also known by so many other names such as Govinda, Gopinath, Mukunda, Muralida, and so on. So, Krishna. Now, we may ask that, well, that appears to be our opinion or our interpretation of Bhagavad Gita because Mostly, the Swamis, when they speak about, if, if at all they speak about Bhagavad Gita, nowadays they mostly talk about stress management and concentration and all these kind of things, which have got really nothing very much to do with Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna didn't ask for stress management. He wanted to know what the purpose of life is. It's a lot more profound than stress management. To understand what is the purpose of life. Arjuna was suffering from stress, no doubt. But he didn't ask for some, from st- some, some pill to overcome. Hey, uh, hey, Krishna, I'm feeling a little stressed out there. Pass the pills, and then I can fight properly. Give me some amphetamines, and then I can, I'll be able to fight better. Okay. So he may say, but in the modern age, well, we don't need Bhagavad Gita. We just go to the pharmacist and get some pills. But uh, Arjun was much more intelligent than, than some. Uh, mediocre so-called Swami. He wanted to know what the purpose of life is. He understood that this stress is a symptom of his ultimate confusion about the purpose of life. And he asked Krishna to explain to him what is the purpose of life. So this is self-discovery. But generally self-discovery, this... uh, Atma Anvesan. This is this term is used to present some kind of impersonal dissolution of the self into some undefined cosmic consciousness. You discover yourself and then you feel that. I am God, I am Krishna, I am Agni, I am Chandra, the whole world is moving because of me. There are persons who, they do meditation and they have this realization that I am everything, everything is me, everything is in me, I am in everything, I am God, and this is their realization. But actually it's nonsense because they are not everything. And everything is not in them. And they're not God. But it's another phase of what is called maya. That one does some meditation. And then one thinks that, well, now I'm self-realized. Now I understood I'm God. But actually one is not self-realized. It's just maya making us think that we're self-realized. Because maya means that which is not. And... 
objectively speaking, subjectively we may think that we are God, but objectively speaking, we are not God. There are so many people who will say, well, uh, yeah, well, actually, I'm God. But uh, you can say like that, but only you may take yourself seriously, or they may have some foolish followers. Now, just now, there's been general elections in India. And uh, Prime Minister, new Prime Minister is to come, Prime Ministry or Ministress or Prime Mistress or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> so, uh, if someone just walking in the street, you meet them and say, well, Hello, what's your name? And they say, who are you? Well, actually, I'm the Prime Minister. Yeah. You're crazy. <laughs> crazy fellow. How can you be just walking in the street in Salem, no one knows you, and you say, well, I'm the Prime Minister. Who will take you seriously? But then someone comes and says, I'm God. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. <laughs> And to be a prime minister is considered a very big position, but it's nothing compared to being God. Prime minister is just a temporary position, full of so many headaches. Actual God is Krishna. He, he's managing much the whole uni, millions of universes. Prime minister only has to manage India and he has so much headache. You'll see Sonia Gandhi, I don't think she'll last five years, but if she does, she's going to have to dye her hair a few times because there's so much anxiety being prime minister. So, uh, so uh, t even to manage this little India, so much headache is going to be. Even to manage a uh, family, big headache, isn't it? What do you think? <coughs> Those of you who are married, to manage the family and the enough income and looking after the children and getting the education and <coughs> in-laws and outlaws and all. <laughs> and, uh, Taxes and getting the children married and so many things, so much headache just to manage a little family. And God is managing the whole family of the whole existence. But we don't see Krishna taking antidepressant pills or any such things. He's not going to the psychiatrist for treatment. Krishna is simply dancing. That's all. Very happy. So, someone may say they are God, but we have a good test. If anyone says they're God, then uh, we shall take off our shoe and beat them in the face. And we'll see what they can do about it. Because if they're God, they should be able to punish us. But if they're not God, then uh, they can, maybe they'll beat us back or... Uh, or run to the police or cry for help. Literally, we don't beat them in the face with shoes, but actually, we should, but uh, <laughs> we don't waste our energy on such useless people. So, what can they do? Someone is claiming they're God, but no one will take them seriously. So, self-discovery. Actually, that is the subject of Bhagavad Gita. But it doesn't mean this ridiculous imagining oneself to be God. Rather, it means to understand what is our relationship with God. Who is God? What is it? So many people say, God, God. Yes, yes, I believe in God. Uh, well, then you ask, who is God? They say, well, uh, well, on Mondays I, I worship God as Ganesh, and on Tuesday as Hanuman, and Wednesday as Durga, and on Thursday as Sai Baba. And then if I'm in a bad mood, then sometimes I, I worship Saddam Hussein as God, and <laughs> <laughs> like this. So, you know, what I feel like. Today, today I think I'll worship Ganesh. Or... They're worshipping some film star. 
Practically, you see the film stars in India and the cricketers. People give more attention to them than to actual God. There's one boy coming to us. He came here from Vella. He came yesterday. His parents, the first, the first son, they gave the name Gautam, which is the name of a rishi. And the second, they gave the name Gavaska. <laughs> He was a famous cricketer one generation ago. So, because they actually you should give them some name of God to the child, but they're thinking the cricketer is more important. So they're given the name Gavaska to him. So, uh, mostly people, they're, they're, you see, you can't expect in a society where people give so much importance to someone whose main qualification is the ability to hit a ball with a piece of wood. You can't expect a very deep level of spiritual realization. If the, the most important thing is this, uh, just like in the, in the election, there was 55% voting, right? But India-Pakistan cricket match, how, many, how much percentage was watching? It must have been like 95%. So it means they're taking cricket more important than politics. So there's so much interest when the cricket game is on. But well, what is it? Is it someone's throwing a ball and someone is hitting with a piece of wood? That's all. It's actually a child's game, but now they've made it so such a, and people are so. Oh, and India won. Oh. And if they'd lost, national disaster. So we can't expect a very high level of general, in the general public, of God realization among people who are take such to take things so foolishly, or the film star, whose main qualification I don't know what it is to wiggle their backside and, and then dancing and you know go like this when they're dancing and, and smile. And, I don't know exactly. I only see. I only see when I go on the airplane. On the airplane, they show some movies. So. I don't know exactly what it's about because I don't watch it. But sometimes you can't help. The big screen is up there. So, so it's also foolishness. So you can't. You can't expect a very high level of God realization unless people are actually trained in spiritual knowledge. So this seminar which is coming up is to give factual knowledge of who is God, who are we, what is the purpose of life. Modern life is simply making people very shallow and foolish. Actually, the, the, if we consider what is the purpose of life, it's very deep. But nowadays people are just simply interested how to buy a car, how to get a house, how to get air conditioner, so many things. Go on holidays to the Seychelles Islands or something like this. How to get money and spend it. This is, practically everyone is interested. Even this all education. Education, uh, I have to send my children to Loyola College or Manipal or IIT. Why? So they can earn money. And then we can be happy, but they're not happy. Yeah. Bangalore, most modern, progressive city in India, highest suicide rate. <laughs> so, people in India, there's a very great spiritual culture, but more or less people have lost it. People don't know what is God. Anyone can come and advertise. I am God, you are God, we are all God. People come, oh, wonderful, God, yeah, very good. But what is actual spiritual life? People, uh, they're not so interested because if we're actually going to take up spiritual life, there has to be some commitment. There has to be some purity. One has to come to a deeper level of thought than one gets from watching TV. We are asking people to be serious. 
Human life is meant for self-discovery, for God-realization. But mostly people, they don't have the intelligence to understand this because their intelligence is simply made very shallow by watching TV. If you watch TV, then you, you, our ability to think introspectively and very deeply and to consider what is the meaning of life, it goes. Because on TV it's just boom, 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 boom. One thought after another. No time to think deeply. They want you to... The TV is designed, the programs are designed to keep your consciousness to absorbed in what's going on, but not deep. Because then, in the middle of the program comes the advertisement. And if you're thinking, if you're actually thinking intelligently then when this stupid advertisement comes on, you'll understand it's stupid. That they show Nirma soap and, oh, we're so happy. We're using Nirma soap. Do they have Nirma soap? They must have on TV. Does anyone? I don't know. But presumably. Or surf. If you use surf, then, oh, everything, because life is so wonderful. And But it's obviously, it's, it's just ridiculous. But the TV advertisement works. They're paying... Lacks of rupees to put there as advertisement. How does it work? Because people are stupid. The TV makes you so stupid that you can believe it. And then they go and buy surf or nirma or whatever. So, actual human life is meant for high thinking. High thinking or deep thinking. Either way you can say it's meant for considering who am I? What is the purpose of life? Why do we suffer in this material world? Most people are in such dull consciousness, they don't even realize they're suffering. They're thinking, oh, we can enjoy it. That we have to suffer. Death, old age, rebirth, they don't consider. Even if we say, ah, they are. People have become so foolish. So we are, our proposal is Tamasima Jyotir Gamaya Come out of the darkness, come to the light What is the light? The light of genuine spiritual knowledge As given by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita So that knowledge as will be gradually revealed in the next few days That knowledge means to understand that we are eternal spirit soul, Atma, we are eternal parts of Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We're meant to serve Him, and by doing so, that will bring us to our original state of blissful consciousness, which is called Krishna consciousness. And Krishna consciousness, that is developed by chanting Hare Krishna, and that is manifest by chanting Hare Krishna. This kirtan, this is the summum bonum of self-discovery. So, this is not a dogmatic statement. It's a statement which is based on Shastra and based on the teachings of so many Acharyas. And it's a journey of self-discovery. We can factually realize that ourselves when we chant. Pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukam kartam avyayam. As Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Raja vidya raja gohyam pavitra medam uttama. This knowledge of Bhagavad Gita is the king or the highest of all knowledge. It is the most confidential of all secrets. It is the most pure knowledge and we can practically experience it. It's not something that you have to go to a cave and you meditate for hundreds of years and then you see some light. No, it's immediately we can perceive. By the happiness of the soul, which is manifest by chanting the names of Krishna, especially the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. So exactly how this is so, why this is so, 
This will be explained in the next few days in the Gita Semina. It's very important that everyone should have this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. It, this, this systematic knowledge of Bhagavad Gita brings our life to a higher dimension to be fixed in factual spiritual knowledge and act on that platform. So that will be described in the next few days. Today is a general introduction to what this seminar is all about. And then from tomorrow, there will be systematic discussion of what is the soul, who is God, what is the relationship between the individual soul, the jiva and the super soul, paramatma, what are the three modes of material nature, sattva, rajas, tamas, what are their effects, how to get free from the effects of the material modes, who are the devatas, and what is their relationship with the Supreme Lord. All these subjects are discussed in Bhagavad Gita, and they will be discussed in this seminar. What is karma, what are the effects of karma, what is punya karma, what is papa, what is transcendental activity, what is karma, jnana, yoga, bhakti, all these things will be discussed. Hare Krishna. Is there any question now? Yes. Yesterday in the course of the lecture, somebody asked the question whether a person leaving body immediately takes another uh, body. So in the explanation, Maharaj said that uh, it goes some people, it depends upon the way. It will be different in different cases. The one point I made is that in one sense, we always have a body because we have a subtle, we're always there in the subtle body. When they go to the celestial planet, uh, do they take a uh, gross body or subtle body? Uh, as I understand, it is a subtle body, but they experience extreme suffering as if they, as they, as if they have a a gross body. Same way with the heavenly planet. Is heavenly so planets, yes, subtle. Subtle. It means it's very, it's it's not bhumi rapa anala vayu. It's it's more subtle, but they they're able to enjoy through that also. Um, now we may say, well, how is that possible? Because uh, that means that that they have form, they have a form, but that form is a projection of their consciousness. Just, actually, this gross body is also a projection of our consciousness. So they have the subtle body. Mean they, it doesn't mean that they're like a ghost without any defined form. The ghost may also have some kind of form. But uh, it's on a finer level. They don't have kidney transplants and all this kind of thing. Not so gross. Yeah. So, gross body, uh, out of Pancha Bodhas, it is only mm. Karma Bhumi. It's only? It's only on Karma Bhumi. Okay, yeah, yeah, it may be in. Uh, there are various levels in the universe also. So, there there are the uh, what are called the sub heavenly planets, where the Upadevatas, like the Gandharvas, they're based there. Although the Gandharvas can also go up to the heavenly planets when they're called. For some festival or something like that. So, according to that, devas have uh, subtle bodies. Subtle, yeah, it's subtle body, yeah. Or, or we can say composed of, yeah, sukshma, comp composed of, but they have form also. It's not, it's not that they're without form. And they enjoy through rup, ras, gandha, sparsha, all these shabda. They enjoy the senses. So they're not like a ghost who's in a subtle body but frustrated because not able to enjoy these things. And therefore they want to take, they want to enter some body and enjoy through that. It's, uh, it's an area which could be researched more. There are many areas of Shastric research which need to be undertaken. Previously, the knowledge of Shastra was vast. There were pundits in every village and vastly learned. That tradition has, to a large extent, been lost now.
we should revive that. Your forefathers, and particularly looking at the those whose material background is that of Brahmana, so they were highly learned in Shastra, generally. Highly learned means they can't know all Shastras, but some Shastras. That is required, all those things. That will come in due course of time. There's a lot, so much work we have to do. Now we're just trying to convince people not to watch TV and cricket and to chant Hare Krishna. But we have so many things to do in uh, study Shastra and presenting theses and all this kind of thing. It's only one area. Then we have farm communities and guiding the governments and so many things to do. Kirtan, reviving the Kirtan art, which to a large extent is lost also. So, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.